Welcome to Life of Gaz. If you're new to the channel, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell because I have a new sea fishing video every Wednesday and then the second Saturday of every month I'll put a freshwater video on as well. Okay guys, well welcome to Life of Gaz. Now unfortunately there's uh, been no chance of me getting out this week. Uh, Due in case to my leg, I'll show you how that's getting on 11 days later. So there's the update on the ankle there, We're day 12, I've got a bit of bruising still up here around my toes. The bruising's going down on the side of my foot just there, I've lost quite a lot of that now. But the swelling is still massive, still can't walk on it, and that's the reason why I haven't been out fishing. But hopefully it's not going to last forever. But what I've done today is I've actually done a slightly different video. Because although I trust the line that I have, what I don't trust is actually the breaking strain on it. Now I know that the line that I use is pretty good. Uh, for instance, I cast straight through 50 pound braid all the way down to the weight and I've cracked off twice in three years. But both of those crack offs were my fault for leaving the Baylar clipped over. Now this means obviously that I do have a lot of trust in this line and what I'm going to do now is show you the realistic breaking strain. Now what I've done is I've put a surgeon's loop at either end and then what I'm going to do is uh, clip it one end to the scales the other end I'm going to clip uh, the other end I'm just going to wrap around the handle of this knife because there's no sharper abrasive edges on it so that can't be for a line failure then what I'm going to do is just pull it up just in the same way as I did in my last video with the mackerel feathers and see what the realistic breaking strain of these lines are both dry and then wet after. So I hope you guys find this enjoyable and I hope uh, obviously um, you guys can take some away from it. Okay so first things first let's check out the scales that I'm using. Now these scales just the T-bar set of scales they're fairly new and I think they're fairly accurate as well because I've got a uh, one pound weight just here and if I tear these guys I'll stick that just on the scale just there let it dangle about and it says it's a pound dead on the nose. Also, uh, just to prove that maybe it's just a false weight on that one, what I'll do is I'll just take that weight off, drop it down there for the time being, and I'll throw a different weight on here. Uh, this is a 12 ounce weight, and obviously what we'll do is just check with two different weights from two different shops that this uh, set of scales is what this set of scales say they are. So we're on the zero just there, stick that on and that reads in at 12 ounces. Now uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start running through these lines on their dry breaking strain. Like I said there's a knot at either end, and they've all got the same knot, they've all got different breaking strains and we're going to see how close they actually get to the breaking strain which it says on the reel. So the first line and then what we're going to do is start with the lightest and go heavier. The first line which I've got is uh, this stuff here, the Camu, and it's a 15 pound line. I use it for freshwater fishing mainly. And what I'm going to do is just tear this one off just there, bring it up and see where we break at. There we go, so we've got a line failure there. Now I can't read what it comes up as, so what I'll do is I'll do a quick slow-mo after each video and we'll just see where they all sit. But what I can tell you about this one, it didn't fell on any of the knots, it fouled right in the centre. Now the next line I got is a very lightweight sea fishing line for me, it's a red wolf, 17 pound, and what I'm gonna do is give that one the same pull and see what it does. So we're just tearing off there. And that one there just uh, cracked off. And that one did fell on the knot just here. So now I've got some Nemesis Blue Fishing Line just there and this is £25. This is what I used to use for a main line quite a few years ago before I went over to braid. So what I'm going to do is just pull that one up and see where it breaks off at. Oh, 
hit me right in the face as well. And that one failed on the knot. So as you can see I was sort of looking at the camera rather than looking at the scales. I managed to crack myself right between the eyes. So next up I've got my go-to for hook lengths. I've got Amnesia. This is £25. I generally use 25 or 30 um, sometimes I'll use 50 and I've got to spool that, but I tend to use that as a rubbing leader when I'm boat fishing. But what I'm going to do now is put that on the scales and see where we go. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, get off the clip there. And another one is broken on the knot. So now I'm going to go up to some of the more heavy weights. I've got 50 pound amnesia just there and we're going to give that a good pull. So for these ones what I'm going to do with these two heavier lines I'm going to just stand up give them a pull and see where they go. And this one actually didn't fell on knot it snapped mid-range. So now I've got some shore catch power line, this one's £60, it's all rigged up, ready to go and what we're going to do is turn the scales back on, let them hit zero that they have and give it a good yank. And let's have a look at the damage of that one and that's another one that went on the knot. That's the monofilament uh, lines which I've got and the whole reason why I'm doing this video is because I bought a big spool of this and the braking strain is nowhere near where it should be. And this is Spectrum Extreme Braid and uh, this stuff is supposed to be £50. And that one has failed on the knot as well. Right, so what we'll do is we'll finish that up there for the dry tests and now I'm going to do some wet tests. So what I'm going to do is make up a set of hook lengths and these hook lengths are essentially just going to have exactly the same knots at either end, just those uh, surgeon loops. And then what they're going to do is they're going to soak for half an hour and it'll give me a chance to clean that up just there and see what damage I've actually done to it. don't think it's a lot, it just feels like a little scratch. So whilst those lines are soaking, what I'll do is I'll just tell you guys a little bit about obviously the experiment I'm doing. This is just a very crude experiment with a knot at either end to give these a sort of real world braking strain. Now the braking strain which the manufacturers put on there, they would have had to have proved to be able to market it at that. But done under lab conditions and done in a very specific way, of course you can get every ounce out of that braking strain. So what I've done is I've actually changed it up to uh, work with what these lines are going to be used for and that's how this video came about but anyway let's get back to it and see what they break when they're wet so there we go I've managed to clean my head up and also those lines about an half an hour soak so we're going to see if soaking the lines affects the breaking strains so here we go the first line we're going to just run through them all in the same order and do them nice and quick So there's a 17 pounder. It's a twenty-five pound amnesia here. It's 
So here's the 50 pound amnesia. Next we've got a 60 pound short catch. And finally, we've got that 50 pound braid. Now, just for the last bit, I've got another bit of braid. Now, this is a bit of braid which I've been using for the last three years. I've never once cracked off with it casting. And I've never once broke it off if I've got snagged up either. I've always managed to break the hook lengths or uh, the link where the lead is before this goes. So this is a line that I've got a lot of faith in. And it's a line which I've sort of refused to change really for quite a long time for that exact reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same test with this. A line which I know is tried, tested. I will put money on the fact that this line is absolutely fine for me fishing because it is all I've used ever since starting this YouTube channel essentially and even for quite a bit before. So we're only going to do the dry test with this one and uh, what I'm going to do is just see you, show you guys where this one lands. And there you go. Okay guys, so let's just have a quick summarise of that. Now, uh, the reason why I did this video was because I bought some line online. Uh, the re reviews were mixed, some people said it's good, some people said the breaking strain was low. I stuck it on a set of scales and seen that the breaking strain was really low. So what I decided to do was I decided to then take it out of that box and sort of try all my other fishing lines and just found it pretty much exactly the same. From expensive to cheap, they all broke lower than their manufactured breaking strain. Now what was really surprising was how much lower they broke when they got wet because each line broke at higher breaking strain dry and a lower breaking strain when it was wet. But anyway, what the moral of the story is what I'm going to take away from this is, is the fact that uh, these lines that I use and that I trust and I've got a lot of confidence in also break lower than their intended breaking strain. So rather than trying to get too complicated in doing it with scales and work out what I'm actually putting on, I'm just going to put them on, cast the weight out, and I'm going to just trial and error it on my rods and see if I trust these lines after a couple of weeks of using them. But if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button down here, check out my latest fishing video over here, and my tackle tips and fishing playlist up top.